Good morning, folks. Let's go right to a siding spring update. NASA's first pictures are in, and they are highly disappointing. With all the technology and all the satellites watching, I am dubious that this is the best they got. No more amateur footage has been published, and we're left with some interesting conclusions. First, there was definitely light effects of the camera, some lens flaring, and Mars version of a sundog. But if that's all that happened, why cut the live feed? Highly suspicious. Now, it must be noted that it was not NASA or the ESA's feed, so comments saying that they cut it off are blatantly incorrect, as they had nothing to do with those feeds. But still, why were they cut off? No good explanation exists as of now, but we can say this. Yesterday, we remarked that if a background star was flashing during this sequence, then it was a light effect and nothing special at all. After some careful examination and speaking with an expert, this may not truly be a background star flaring and an artifact of whatever happened on Mars itself, meaning that even a background flash like this one could be caused by something real happening at Mars. Is this enough to make a conclusive call? Certainly not. But with the privately controlled feeds being cut off and the official images underwhelming, how can one not speculate? Right now, here is what we can say. The companies in charge of the live feed cut it out upon occurrence of the anomaly. It wasn't NASA, but that's not the point. There are definitely a few videos out there making a stink about simple light effects. However, that initial conclusion about the background star may be incorrect. The expert photos are borderline pitiful given their technology, and we cannot completely rule out an electrostatic discharge between bodies updates to come as needed. Jumping to the sun, there were five M-class solar flares yesterday and this uptick is in full swing. All based on the big sunspot group coming in on the south, the others are magnetically simple, separated, but not this one. The question now is not how to classify the region, but just how many delta spots can we locate, at least a few. Flaring should continue over the next few days, and interestingly, despite the fact that a few of those flares were not impulsive, there was virtually no ejecta from these eruptions. No plasma cloud heading into space, no CME, interplanetary shockwave, or vortices. In fact, the only real CME of note erupted behind the limb, beautiful in 304 angstroms. Quick note on Bartol. Neutron counts are falling, and if it looks like the muons haven't moved in days, you're right. They stopped giving data on October 16th. Solar wind shows very elevated solar wind speed, and this is definitively from the departing coronal hole. The stream intensified yesterday before falling off in the overnight hours, but a geomagnetic storm was produced. Eyes open for more. Right now, the more powerful coronal hole is on the Earth-facing disk, and might have begun its uptick already as a six magnitude quake hit all the feeds yesterday coming from Ecuador but in standard fashion it is listed well below that mark at the USGS. I've linked an article on Earth's albedo or reflectivity. You can learn why ice and clouds reflect light and cool us down but you won't hear anything about how more clouds were the entire premise of the greenhouse effect that is supposed to warm us up. Hmm. You should remember this from a few weeks ago. The September snow cover was way above average in the northern hemisphere, and if you isolate just North America, it was the highest September snow cover in our record books. Shocker. The spin doctors have declared this to be one of, if not the warmest September on record. Interesting. You can see how part of the planet was warm. Other parts of the planet were cold, seen even more so when we look at 2014 thus far a story of climate extremes. The long-term trend data still shows the temperature plateau we've hit over the last two decades. This is the great pause you hear about and the subject of our climate change playlist linked for you below. Quick Tropics Watch shows the system in the Gulf developing further. Could have some more this week. Meanwhile, let's see if we can isolate the genesis of this pinstripe temperature delta. Veterans of the channel know it's all about wind drive via pressure systems. Low in eastern Canada shifting warm air north at the east, cold air south on the west. Meanwhile, a high pressure cell in Arkansas is driving heat and moisture up through the western states. 
This is more than the cause of the temperature shift. It causes the bad weather too, which follows the moisture flow into the desert and north and also creates the convergence in the east that will be a factor. NOAA's alerts show pretty much the same thing with the calm, dry conditions in the center. Europe is a bit tricky today. You can see the flow onto land there, but the northern pole around Italy of heat and moisture is not so evident. You can see a bit in the cloud convergences, but not a lot. Nevertheless, there will be some bad storms in these areas tonight. Moisture flow heading atop New Zealand to a small low near the North Island. Also got a convergence created in Central Australia that will swing eastward tonight and settle in the corner. Those are the watch zones here. Got some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.